Getting two particle photons to talk to each other can be useful in applications including radio control and monitoring. In this article, we will learn how to get two particle photons to talk to each other over the internet. For this tutorial, you'll need two particle photon boards and two micro USB B cables. When it comes to getting microcontrollers to communicate, there are a number of different methods available. These methods include UART, I2C, SPI, and CAN. And while these methods are quick and easy to set up, they all have one problem in common. They require a physical connection. The particle photon boards have Wi-Fi capabilities, which means that in theory, two photons in the same network can talk to each other using a TCP connection. For two photons to communicate, one photon requires to be configured as a TCP server, which accepts incoming requests, while the other is configured as a TCP client, which initiates a request to connect. Once two devices are connected, they can transfer data to each other asynchronously. The first class that needs to be used and understood is the TCP client class. While there are at least 11 functions associated with this class, we will only learn about the basics as they are simple and easy to understand, which would be connect, print ln, available, read, and stop. Connect is used to connect to a server and two variables are passed to this function, the IP address of the server and the port. The IP address will be obtained from the TCP server later and the IP address is in the form of a byte array. The port is predetermined. In our example, we will use a standard HTTP port of 80. This function also returns true if the connection was successful and false if it failed. PrintLN is used to send text to the connected server. This function also terminates the send string with a carriage return line feed so that if the text was being printed on the other side, it would be printed on a new line. Available is a function that returns how many bytes are waiting. If the connected server sends data to the client, it will be stored in a buffer which can then be read later by the photon. The data in the buffer is in byte form and requires to be converted into a suitable format if you're not using bytes. The data can be read using the read function. The example shows how to read strings up to 32 characters in length and convert that data into a string. Stop is used to disconnect from the currently connected server and should be called once you no longer require the communication link. This can be useful for freeing up the line for other devices that may also want to connect to the server. Creating a TCP server is trivial to do on a photon and takes advantage of the TCP server class. Only a few functions need to be understood as the TCP server class is used with the TCP client class. These functions would be begin and available. Begin is used to start the TCP server which accepts connection request on the specified port, which is done when creating the server class. This function returns nothing, accepts no argument, and merely needs to be called once. Available is used to determine if a client is requesting a connection, and if there is such a connection request, then available can be passed to a client class object. From there, the client object can be used to send data to the connected client. 